for the past decade. Decade! And seven published books on alcohol markers. I've been using the same paper, Bristol smooth surface bristle. I also have found a really inexpensive alternative to bristle that I've been using for years as well by Hammer Mill. I'll put the links below. What I didn't realize is that there is a different kind of marker paper that I've never tried. Now historically I go and use bristle paper and not marker paper because the marker paper that I've always bought and tested is A super freaking expensive and B is super freaking transparent and it's gross. It's made for like designers like fashion designers who are doing like their croquis, right? You only have to draw it once and then you can do overlays of marker paper and like sketch out different designs. But the way that I do art is I like to make little big masterpieces. So I don't want like a flimsy, transparent piece of paper. I want like a freaking solid piece of paper. And I feel super dumb because I didn't know that there is a thing. There is a variety of marker paper that is not transparent and translucent and filmy and stupid. It's actually quality paper. So I'm trying my very first paper today. That is marker paper. It's by Strathmore. So in this video, I'm testing this out. I'm a little skeptical because like I said, I'm like, I'm a loyal to my Bristol. So this is a big test. Let's see what happens. But before I dive into good paper that works, you really need to look at what happens when you use bad paper that doesn't work and what makes it bad paper and what happens with the markers? Well, here you can plainly see. This is a more absorbent cardstock. It's not smooth, it's not Bristol, it's lighter weight. And I used it so I could pass it through my home printer and just do a coloring exercise for my Celtic Collective Fantasy Art Club students. What I underestimated was just how bad the paper was going to make all of the markers look. I no, theoretically, hypothetically, that using the wrong paper, it leads to bad results. But it's been such a long time since I actually experienced this myself that it was, it was a really good, profound refresher. So as you can see, and I'm gonna just pause it at the end here. As you can see, even though I went over with another layer to smooth out the layers underneath, you have this super patchy, unevenness to the bottom layers that never resolve even when you add the layers on top. So my process for alcohol markers is I do all of my layering, however I'm gonna do it with all of the colors, and then I go back to the lightest color or lighter value, and then I will blend. I'll go back and do like a whole coat in one direction and then a whole coat in another direction. And that will literally blend the pigments that are sitting in the alcohol-based solvent to blend with one another and then it evens out all the streaks. But that does not have a chance to happen when you're using paper that is absorbent, which is why Bristol and specifically made marker paper is so appropriate. You even need something that's like non-porous so that the pigments can stay and dance around in the alcohol solvent and blend. If your paper is absorbent, it sucks the ink in and it doesn't allow it to move and blend back with the other colors and layers that you add on, making it look, well, like shit. And just to give you uh, two more examples, here's a light skin tone where you can see it's just awful. <laughs> it's just awful. It looks like someone mowed a lawn on her face and you can see the zigzags and you have this uneven distribution of the pigment. It looks terrible. So now let's give a go with the proper paper and see the difference. So you'll notice right away how streaky it is on Bristol as well, right? You can see every single streak. So at the start, you might thinking like, well, what the heck? It's exactly the same as bad as the first one, but it's not because we haven't introduced any additional layers and we haven't tried to blend anything. So now we're going in with the second color and the colors I'm using here are Copic, Copic C3, 4, and 5. So they're all closely related to each other on the value scale, which is the same with it. I did the skin tones and then I'll do it again in purples on the next paper. So you can see the initial layers look identical to the ones that we did with the regular skin tones on the quote unquote, a bad paper. But you'll see the magic in a minute when you start blending colors together. This is where the paper is everything. So again, this is the third. It doesn't really it doesn't really come into play yet. We're still adding different colors. It's when we mash them all together. So there's a couple ways of doing this, but my favorite way is to use one shade 
equal to the first lightest shade or lighter. If you don't want your skin tone to get any darker, then you will want to grab one shade lighter, and that's what I do. So I'm using C2 here. That will, this is what starts the blending process, actually. So you can even see, just look at the, look at the first layer right now at the top. You see how her forehead and her nose start melding? And those streaks start to just vanish like before your eyes. It's so bananas. Just by, st I'm not even doing circular motions to try to work it even, even better. I'm just doing straight forward streaks in some different directions. And that's all you need to do to really help to blend those together. So the pigments lived up off the paper because it's almost non-porous and they have a chance to really dance around, get intermingled before settling back down. The alcohol evaporates and the pigments are left nice and stirred up on the paper so those streaks vanish. It's very cool. Okay, so the Bristol is nice and heavy duty. When I add more and more layers, it just gets a beautiful, smooth, smooth layer. And now sometimes it'll actually blend them so much, you even lose, <laughs> you actually lose your shading. So you can come back again and you can like, oh, well, what was my starting color with C3? Well, maybe we can go back and add and look how much darker it is then. I've kind of bleached it out, those previous colors. So you can go back in and add another color since it got really quite blended out, okay? But look at, we almost like, we almost like erased the shading. Remember how dark that was? That was this dark. And look at, it almost disappeared because it got, bl it blended so well that it almost disappeared. But can you see the horrible difference between this one, which you can still see very abrupt lines and this one where it's kind of like ultra smooth. Okay, well, that was the Bristol, which is by my hammer mill, which is seven cents a piece of paper. So cheap and it works so, so well. But don't leave me yet. I have two more things to show you. First, we're gonna go over the marker paper and then I have another fun surprise at the end. All right, so we here have the final paper test. This is the, ah, the marker paper. This one by Strathmore, smooth surface. Okay, so I've already tested and I know that crappy paper that is not Bristol leaves very graphic unblended marks. Bristol paper, you're able to get a much smoother transition even if your early layers are super streaked. There's like a tiny bit of difference there, but it's look, it's, she's very, very smooth. So this is the test. So I'm gonna start with a little bit of hair. All right, so we'll just forward to the coloring portion because that is definitely the most important part. I also just didn't want to speed through this too fast because you really need to see how streaky that first layer is. That's like all paper, regardless if it's good or bad, it goes on really streaky. Now, also I should add, you can absolutely apply alcohol markers in circular patterns in different ways. There are definitely different ways to do this, but I wanted to do the test in a way that you could like, we're testing against, can you mitigate the streakiness with simply doing other layers? And yes, is it also how much is your paper and how much is it your markers? Like what, how can we fix this? Cause it is a huge problem. And even when you do small circles, you still can see the circular motions of your markers as well. Um, so I kind of wanted it to be super streaky because that's the best way to test, right? And see what we can do. So this is the second layer, which is obviously the next darker value. Um, this is a super normal way that I actually do do my faces in alcohol markers, it's very step-by-step. Step. Um, and just in case you're curious, you can learn uh, like how to do the lighting and the shading patterns on your face. If you grab my Skin Tone Secrets book, Marker Edition, it's on Amazon. Um, it's super helpful for people that are learning how to um, try to figure that out. Like where is the shading coming from? What are the skin tones? And the whole book is written around the Ohuhu 36 Skin Tone set. So if you have that, it's even, 
It's even doubly helpful, but even for this case where the skin is purple, I'm still referring to my book for shading patterns and light uh, and layers. It's like step-by-step -step on how to use the layers. But so here we go. We have our three, I always just do three or four shades. And then, and I discussed this in the earlier example, we do all the shades. It looks crazy town right now. And then we use a lighter, the lightest shade. We go back to shade one or lighter. And then you put the lines going in the opposite direction and you can start to see it's so crazy. If you're using good paper, once you add a few layers, you can start to actually see them like blend away. As the pigment gets wet, it stirs up. Like again, I've already talked about this, but it like stirs up the bottom layers if the paper is correct and it will actually stir and mix up the pigments that you've already put down and it will start blending them all together. Look how the stripes in her face start to fade away. So in fairness, I didn't do that many layers to the first like normal skin tone color example I showed at the very beginning of this video. So in order to really put the paper to the test and the markers, look how smooth that is. That's bananas. I am going to go back right now and test to do the lighter shades on top of the old previous layers on the regular skin tone colors and check out what happens. And just to be triply sure, I'm going to go back to this original one with the horrible. And I'm gonna use, one thing I didn't test to be fair is I didn't use a lighter version of this to go over it and see uh, if, it would, if it would blend those. So I'm gonna do it right now. I'm gonna give this crappy paper one more chance to do its job. I'm gonna go swatch one that's really light. Okay, this is YR212. So I was using Ohuhu's for this example. So I will continue. Oh, I can already feel the difference. It's absorbent, which I know is the worst kind. So that's why mixed media paper and watercolor paper and cotton paper are no-nos. Just a no, no, no. But I'm gonna still try it. So if I'm using the lightest, all right, and I'm just gonna chop it across and maybe, just maybe, maybe we can get this to, to rock and roll the way I just did with the other ones, and maybe we can get these to blend a little bit more. Give our paper a second chance and a fair chance. Come on. Ooh, actually, ew, ugh. You know what it's doing? Ew, look at it. It's making it worse. Holy crap, look at, ew. <laughs> not good. Okay. I genuinely did not see this coming. Look at this. It is like, even though it has pigment and I'm using it in exactly the same way I used it on my marker paper in my Bristol, it's like carving out. It's somehow etching into the paper and lifting all of the original color. So now it's actually streaked a million times more than it was before I tried to blend. That's bananas and so bad. That's bad, you guys. I did not see that coming. I thought it would just, nothing would happen. I didn't know it was gonna carve horrible, horrible lines into her face. That looks so bad. Wow. Okay, that is insane. So I give marker paper a big fat yes. This new marker paper that I'm have never yet tried before. And just so I didn't leave you hanging, this is how she ended up looking in the end. And you can tell all of that crazy, crazy streaking really just got blended all away. How crazy is that? That's crazy. <laughs> so if you take anything away from this video, just use Bristol or my favorite hammer mill or that marker paper I tested and nothing else when you use alcohol markers. Watercolor paper, no. Cotton paper, no. Sketchbook paper, no. Mixed media, no. <laughs> Don't do it. And if you wanna learn how to do all sorts of adorable fairies, then come and join my Celtic Collective Fantasy Art Club. It's ridiculously fun. There's links to all three of my art clubs and all my favorite art supplies, including the papers mentioned in this video over at awesomeartschool.com. Click the link here and you can get even more fun marker drawing tips, thanks.